Shalom. Today we're continuing the investigation of the relationship between the astronomical signs which appear uh, on the ecliptic. It's like a big equator in the sky uh, connected to the various months of the Hebrew calendar. Today we're going to talk about the ninth month and the ninth month is named in Hebrew as Kislev. We see it in Zechariah 7.1 And it came to pass in the fourth year of Darius that the word of Yahweh came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even Kislev. You see it's spelled with a U here. Nehemiah 1.1 The words of Nehemiah the son of Hachaliah and it came to pass in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, I was in the Shushan, in the palace. Now, Kislev can uh, be seen to be related to the word Kisil, which is translated, in fact, as the constellation Orion. Job 38, 31. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Orion is probably one of the most easily recognizable constellations in the sky. And I read some years ago that in fact, the stars in the belt of Orion are moving apart. Amos 5.8, seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. Yahweh is his name. So we see at this time of the year is when uh, Orion becomes visible in our hemisphere, in the northern hemisphere. And so it's possible that Kislev is named for that reason. Kassil comes from root Kessel, which has two remarkably different uh, meanings. Uh, Psalm 78, 7, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And in Proverbs 3.26, we see, For Yahweh shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So this idea of hope and confidence, the idea of um, Orion as being a strong hunter. We also see in Leviticus 3.4 that it is a physical part of the body, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall be taken away. So it can refer to the flank, the side of the human being, which is thought to be the uh, place of where confidence comes from. In Psalm 49, 13, this is their way, is their folly, yet their posterity approve their sayings, Selah. So sometimes we put our confidence in the things that are foolish, sometimes we put them could put our confidence in something which is strong. So Kessel can mean either one of these things. Now we know that the month of Kislev is the holiday of Hanukkah. And Hanukkah means dedication. Numbers 784. This was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the princes of Israel. 12 charges of silver, 12 silver bowls, 12 spoons of gold. Uh, one of the very longest chapters, certainly in Torah, where each tribe brings an equivalent offering, and they're all listed one by one by one, is for the dedication of the altar. Nehemiah 12:27, And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness, with both thanksgivings and with singing, with cymbals and psalteries and with harps. Nehemiah had worked on the wall, the wall was finished, and they're going to dedicate the wall. Now Hanukkah comes from a root, Hanach, which it mean, is translated dedicate, but it also has this unique translation in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So it's connected also to education. The um, Ministry of Education in, in uh, Israel is the Department of Chinuch. So it's an idea of education, of training the child. Now there is a fellow, uh, well there's more than one fellow named Chanuch, 
But in particular, in Genesis 5, 23, and 24, we see it's translated, uh, transliterated as the name Enoch. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Very unique character in the generations. Uh, obviously, he was dedicated to the Lord. He dedicated himself. Now, one of the things that uh, happened in the ninth month, we see in Jeremiah 36, 9. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before Yahweh to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. And uh, Jeremiah has uh, wound up dictating some important prophecy and the leaders bring the prophecy uh, to uh, Jehoiakim, uh, where he is uh, sitting in the winter house in the ninth month, and there's a fire burning in the hearth before him. So we see it's definitely this time of year, Kislev, it's, it's winter. And what happens is that uh, as the prophecy is being read, it's being cut up and put in the fire to burn it up as if you could burn up the words of, of Yahweh. Um, and uh, they carry the word back to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah just dictates the word again because the word will always stand. Yahweh's word will always stand. In the meantime, Jehoiakim is uh, cut off. His, his seed is cut off from being on the throne. Now, the astronomical sign for Kislev is Sagittarius. And in ancient times, it was not so much about the centaur, we see the horse guy there, but it's more about the bow and arrow. And in Hebrew, the name of this sign is Keshet, which means both the bow as the rainbow and the bow of the bow and arrow, it has to do with the arch shape. And uh, we've done another series about about the bow, all the colors in the rainbow. You can read about that uh, there. Genesis 9, 13. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. In Ezekiel 1, 28, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yahweh. And when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So that is speaking also of the shape of what Ezekiel saw in his vision in the throne room of God. In Genesis 21:16, And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. This is a measure of a length of how far you could shoot an arrow. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept, this being Hagar, about the loss of uh, Ishmael's position in the, and her position in the family with uh, Sarah and Abraham. Genesis 49:24, part of the prophecy about Joseph and his bow. Now, this is a, a real bow for the bow and arrow, a bow in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Very uh, messianic prophecy. Another interesting place where this bow is mentioned is in Zechariah 9:13. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. So it seems like in this month, which is the month of Hanukkah, uh, this is a, a prophecy of the Hebrew people fighting against Greece. And we have, in, in fact, two famous sky warriors associated with this month, Kassiel, Orion, the hunter, and also Keshet, the one with the bow. The story of Hanukkah is related in, in Maccabees, 
from 2 Maccabees 10, 5 through 7. It happened that on the same day on which a sanctuary had been profaned by the foreigners, the purification of the sanctuary took place, that is, on the 25th day of the same month, which is Kislev. They celebrated it for eight days with rejoicing in the manner of the festival of booths, in other words, tabernacles, remembering how not long before, during the festival of booths, they had been wandering in the mountains and caves like wild animals. Therefore, carrying ivy-wreathed wands and beautiful branches and also fronds of palm, they offered hymns of thanksgiving to him who had given success to the purifying of his own holy place. I hope that... uh, I am not the first person to have to break it to you that the story of the oil and the little cruise of oil lasting for eight days is a rabbinical myth. I'm sorry if this is the first time you hear that. The reason they celebrated for eight days is because they were celebrating the eight days of the Festival of Booths, the Festival of Sukkot. You can see what do they got? Beautiful trees, fronds and palms. Um, ivory wands is all reminiscent of the celebration of Sukkot. Now there's another prophecy which uh, comes the day before Hanukkah begins. It's in Haggai 2, 18 and 19. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of Yahweh's temple was laid. Consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth. From this day I will bless you. If we look at an idiom in English, maybe it's related to is the seed yet in the barn? Uh, Maybe we could say it's like, is the bun in the oven, okay? This is the day before Hanukkah begins. The bun in the oven we're talking about is Yeshua. There are lots of other calculations that can show you that Yeshua was born at Sukkot. If you count from Kislev around the nine months of pregnancy, This will show you that he was conceived at the time of Hanukkah and uh, born in the time of Sukkot. One of the things we see about Hanukkah is that it is a festival of light. And in fact, Sukkot also is considered to be a festival of light. In Isaiah 49, it's talking about the servant of the Lord. In 1 and 2, listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from afar. Yahweh hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name, and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft, in his quiver he hath hid me. Just drawing together the idea of the bow and arrow, the arrow, and the uh, of, of the Sagittarius, the bow of the Keshet, and here is a mention of Yeshua being like a sharp sword, being an arrow hid in the quiver of the Lord. Many, many times we see that Yeshua is the light. John 1, 9, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world, speaking of his birth. John 8, 12, Then spake Yeshua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 9, 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John 12, 46, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth in me should not abide in darkness. So we have the light tying together the festival of Hanukkah, the probable time of the conception of Yeshua, a festival of light, and tied to his birth uh, at Sukkot, another festival where light is considered to be very important. We see, uh, read about the menorot in the courtyard that were, I don't know, some 75 feet high and 
how they lit those and it lit up the whole of Jerusalem. These two things are tied together. It also happens that the number nine is tied to the crucifixion of Yeshua. If you go to the series Counting the Cost and watch the presentation on the number nine, you can see how those things are connected. We have another small hint here in 1 Chronicles 24, 10 through 11. David is setting up the courses of the priests for their duty. The seventh course goes to Chakoz. The eighth course goes to Abiyah or Abijah. He is the course of uh, Zechariah, the father of John the Immerser, John the Baptist. It tells you that this is his course, the eighth one. And this is uh, partially how you can figure out uh, when the angel visited Zechariah and he became struck dumb because he found out he was going to have a child. And now you see the next course, the ninth one, is given to Yeshua. Just a lot of interesting things how these things are woven together. I pray you have Chag Chanukah Sameach, a happy Chanukah, a good month of Kislev, Seems we are still waiting. Just remember, Tasimit Ha'inayim, Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.